This is the End Time Hour with Jason Carter on Eternal Radio. Yesterday's prophecies, today's news. Welcome friends, welcome to another broadcast of End Time Hour on Eternal Radio. Friends, we are living in a dress rehearsal. All that the Bible has predicted would happen during the time of the end is happening right now before our eyes as you listen to this broadcast. Everything prophesied is being foreshadowed. Surely this proves the accuracy of not only the Bible, but the Bible as a whole. All the prophecies concerning the Messiah, Jesus Christ, the first time around, were fulfilled precisely as foretold. In fact, scholars suggest there are over 300 prophetic writings contained in the Bible that were fulfilled by Christ, and there are loads of messianic predictions. For example, that he would be born in Bethlehem, that he would be born of a virgin, that he would be called Emmanuel, God with us us, that he would be called a Nazarene, that he would bring light to those living in Galilee, that he would be pierced for our transgressions, and that he would be crucified with criminals, that he would resurrect from the dead, and that he would ascend into heaven, and he would become a sacrifice for yours and for my sin. Hallelujah. And the list goes on and on and on. A book called Science Speaks that was based on the science of probability and endorsed by the American Scientific Affiliation set out the odds of any one man in all of history fulfilling even only eight of the 60 major prophecies fulfilled in the life of Jesus. Now according to the authors the probability that Jesus of Nazareth could have fulfilled even eight such prophecies is the equivalent of covering the face of the entire state of Texas, two feet deep with silver dollars and sending a blindfolded man heading off from Dallas on foot in any direction and on his first attempt being able to pick up one specifically marked dollar out of all those dollars. Friends, in other words, these were not vague and ambiguous prophecies that could have been associated with just anyone. They were specific prophecies relating to one specific person, the person of of Jesus Christ. Now, not only that, but Jesus' first coming is a historical fact. There's no faith needed to believe that he came. Just check historical documents, even outside of the Bible. And as surely as we believe that Plato, Aristotle and Julius Caesar were born, so also Jesus Christ was born and walked the earth. Now, the historical document, the Jewish Talmud, refers to Jesus as having magical powers and of leading Israel astray, that he had disciples who were martyred and that he was executed the day before the Passover. Now, there are other anti-Christian Jewish records written about the life of Jesus too. Then, of course, there's the non-biblical historian Josephus, born just four years after Jesus' death and resurrection. And he describes Jesus as being a wise man and the Messiah who was executed. Now, the Bible, of course, not only foretold Jesus' first coming, it also foretold Jesus' second coming, and it also foretells a whole load of other events too. Praise Jesus. He hasn't left us alone, fumbling about in the darkness. 
As I said, we are living in a dress rehearsal. Just as Nazi Germany was a foreshadowing of events, so too what is happening today is a foreshadow of all that the Bible foretold would happen. The demonic powers are at work, desperate to take dominion of the earth using politicians and religious leaders as their pawns in the end game plan. Now, little do they know their plot will bring about their own downfall. Now, I don't know whether they're just plain stupid or just so blind with psychotic rage that they miss this. It's like the demonic plot to kill Jesus, isn't it? Satan couldn't win Jesus over to the kingdom of darkness, so he had to have him killed. But there was the mistake for Satan. Jesus' death was not only bound to fail. How on earth could the author of life itself be snuffed out? Friends, not only did Jesus rise again, but in his death, he brought many sons and daughters to glory. And if you're listening to this broadcast and you've given your life over to Jesus Christ, then you share in that glory. Hallelujah. Now, just think about what is going on around us today. Revelation tells us the Antichrist will deceive the whole world. Revelation 13, 14. Friends, it is little exaggeration to say the whole world is living under a powerful delusion today. Sorry to go on about it, but it's so vital that we have this constantly at the forefront of our minds. People's thoughts are formed by people who they don't even know and cannot see. Today, our judgment of Hollywood stars and politicians who we've never met or even seen from a distance are based solely upon the message we have been told and shown about them. The portrayal of their lives is an illusion. If the media want to big someone up and make them out to be a hero, then all they need to do is churn out fabricated positive information about them, restrict any negative stories about that person, basically always portray them in a positive light, and when they're being interviewed, the host is sympathetic and friendly towards their viewpoints, isn't critical or questioning them or digging the dirt. Mainstream photographs are always displayed of them being smiley, positive, being friendly and have good posture and good expressions. Now, on the other hand, if they want to paint a negative image and destroy a person, then all they need to do is just do everything that I've just said in the reverse. Churn out fabricated negative information about them or even factual or exaggerated negative information. It's much easier, isn't it, to dig up real dirt about a person, isn't it? And that news is much more salacious and effectual than good news. It spreads like wildfire. People who point the finger in judgment of people's sinful acts actually relish in reading about that sin because they are sinners too. In interviews, the host is always hostile and is always on the attack, never sympathetic and opposing to their viewpoint at every turn. Mainstream photos show the person grimacing and with negative body language. This is repeated over and over and over again until the message has been drummed in. Person A is great and fantastic. Person B is a very bad person. Now, this portrayal of people through the mainstream media creates an illusion, a total fabrication of who that person actually is. The mainstream media gives us the person they want us to see, especially when it comes to our leaders and who to elect into office. Friends, the mainstream media is the tool of the devil. It is being used to bring about the plan of the global elite and it will be used to convince the people to elect the Antichrist to power. 1 John 4, 1, friends, gives us this warning. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Friends, let's be on our guard, shall we? Hallelujah. Eternal Radio. Sounds to energize your faith. Jesus, you are the one who rose in power. The one who reigns forever. Music for your life with Eternal Radio. This is the End Time Hour with Jason Carter on Eternal Radio. Yesterday's prophecies, today's news.
That was Stephen Curtis Chapman singing One True God. Friends, there's only one God, isn't there? And I know we say that and believe it, but in practice, do we only serve one God? Or are there others in our lives? We might not have a golden calf in the backyard, but what golden calves do we have in our own hearts? It's so important, friends, because if we're not single-hearted, we will not be so discerning with the truth. And it's Jesus who leads us into all truth. So let's get our hearts and our minds singly devoted to Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, today, the government controlled mainstream media is feverishly promoting Hillary Clinton. Yes, sure, they throw out a few negatives here and there just to give the illusion of being impartial. But on the whole, butter wouldn't melt. Now, I've said it before on End Time Hour, voting Hillary Clinton will open the door to darkness and will significantly advance the agenda for the coming of the man of sin, the Antichrist. Friend, Hillary Clinton is not who she claims to be. She is a fraud, a mirage of the real woman. She engages in evil. That is clear, friends. Just look at her eyes. Look at her body language. Anyone with just an ounce of discernment should be able to tell there's something wrong here. Friends, don't get me wrong here. I don't want to sound unkind. I do pray for Hillary Clinton and we would do well to continue to pray for her too in the hopes that she would turn from her ways and turn to Christ Jesus. Now, friends, Obama and Hillary's policies have literally decimated the Middle East. That anti-Russian rhetoric is heading us towards World War III. Their policies empower Islamic extremism and their militant advancement of the LGBTQ agenda is destroying family life. Hillary says she's for family, but her actions do not line up with what she says. The LGBTQ agenda is destroying traditional family. Hillary also supports the killing of babies up to full term. Friends, you can't be for family or even for humanity either if you can support the evil and barbaric act of murdering a human life by pulling it limb from limb out of the mother's womb. How can a mother be taught to be a mother when the state advocates such wicked things? And how can it send those to prison who murder children and babies in cold blood? How can those who advocate the genocide of these defenceless and beautiful children and then judge other nations for crimes against humanity? Friends, it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Those who do this are hypocrites of the highest order. But doesn't all this serve to show how deceived the nations actually are? How deceived the peoples of the earth actually are? Doesn't this serve to show how the nations will follow the Antichrist? The Antichrist will be for all these things and more. And let's make no mistake, friends. Hillary Clinton's beliefs are Antichrist. Clinton said when talking of abortion, deep-seated cultural codes, religious beliefs and structural biases have to be changed. Did you hear that? Christians must be forced to change their religious views to accommodate abortions. That, my friends, is Antichrist teaching right there. Friends, it shouldn't surprise us to also learn that according to her husband, Bill, Hillary Clinton engages in necromancy, an activity the Bible specifically warns against doing because it is a detestable practice. Deuteronomy 18 doesn't beat around the bush. It says, There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, one who uses divination, one who practices witchcraft, or one who interprets omens or a sorcerer or one who casts a spell, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For whoever does these things is detestable to the Lord. Friends, necromancy is conversing with demons who masquerade as the spirits of the dead. According to her husband Bill, Hillary believes she has communicated with the wife of President Roosevelt, Eleanor Roosevelt, and other reports say she also believes she has contacted Gandhi too. 
Now, in his remarks, the former president said his wife was known to commune with Eleanor Roosevelt, who died in November 1962, and that Roosevelt gave Hillary a message for Bill to tell a gathering at a dedication ceremony for the Franklin D. Roosevelt Four Freedoms Park in 2012. He said, as all of you famously learned when I served as president, my wife, now the Secretary of State, was known to commune with Eleanor on a regular basis, he continued. And so she called me last night on her way home from Peru to remind me to say that, that Eleanor had talked to her and reminded her that I should say that. Friends, it's not possible to communicate with dead people. That's why it is strictly forbidden in the Bible. It's communicating with demons and this activity only leads to demonic possession and control by those demons. Maybe that's why Hillary suffers from seizures. Who knows? But friends, think about it. Would you want a woman in one of the most powerful positions in the world, the one who in four minutes could launch nuclear weapons, to be the one who engages with demons? Demons who want nothing more than to wreak havoc upon the earth by eliminating millions through nuclear war. Friends, that's how Hiroshima and Nagasaki happened, hatched in darkness at Bohemian Grove of all places, where the global elite bow down to a stone owl. Yes, I know it sounds like make-believe, friends, and I wish it was, but do the research and you'll see that it's all true. Friends, the Antichrist will likely be into necromancy and a whole load of other satanic practices too. Why do you think Hitler and the Nazis killed all those Jews? It was a spiritual act of wickedness committed by those who engaged with the dark forces of hell itself. Hitler had a replica of the seat of Satan made that is talked of in the book of Revelation, chapter 2. The seat of Satan, or the Pergamum altar, as it's also known, was a place of ritual murder for those who refused to acknowledge the Roman emperor. From this replicated place, Hitler delivered his final solution speech, the systematic extermination of the Jews in the Holocaust. Mark my words, friends, just as the Jews suffered so terribly in the Holocaust, so too will the Christian community. They are already building the death camps along with railroads. Friends, the slogan, never again, puts us into a false sense of security. Friends, it shouldn't surprise us that those who have a lust for global control engage with the demonic. It's the only way to obtain global control of the planet. Do you remember when Jesus was tempted in the desert? Satan said, all this I will give you, referring to global control. If only you bow down and serve me. Those who want global control become the pawns of Satan. Then, just look at the rise of Islam and the recent advancement across Europe, initiated by the migrant crisis. A journalist called this Immigration Jihad. Think too about the beheadings committed by those Muslims who adhere to a literal application of the Quran. Beheadings are prophesied in the Bible. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image. Revelation 20 verse 4. Yes, friends, it's all in the Bible and it's being tragically fulfilled as I broadcast this message. Then just look at the advancement of technology. Whoever would have thought it would progress this far? No wonder the Amish Christian community reject technologies like television, radio and computers. It's leading in one direction, total enslavement. It's already enslaving the nations. People are slaves to it. Society has been set up to be totally dependent on it. And once the cashless society is fully realised, then it's pretty much checkmate. And the mark of the beast implementation will follow swiftly after. Possibly by 2030, we could see a global government. Well, that's the UN's agenda. Let's see if they pull it off. Agenda 2030 is the total control of humanity. Now, when you put all of this together, can you see the picture? It's identical to the picture displayed in the ancient texts foretold by the apostles, the prophets and Jesus Christ himself. And just to add to all of that, the battle for Syria that rages and could ignite into World War Three is just a five hour car drive from Armageddon. 
Now, it's not possible to actually drive there because there's no road, but if there was a road, it would only take five hours by car. Friends, the dress rehearsal is underway. The stage is being set. How long before the final fulfillment takes place? Well, we don't know, do we, friends? And that's why the Bible warns us that Jesus will come like a thief in the night. So, friends, we have to get ready, don't we? That's what we should make of all this. We should get ready now and just be totally prepared for whatever might happen. Let's not waste a single moment of our time. Let's draw some positive responses from these disturbing times that we live in. The Bible says because we know the world is going to end with a bang, we should live lives of holy conduct. So let's do that, shall we? But what does holy conduct actually mean in practice? Well, I can tell you what it doesn't mean. It doesn't mean religious ritual and sacraments. No, it's a lot harder than those easy tasks of outward holiness which display our acts before men. Which, by the way, isn't holiness at all. It's just pharisaical. No, this holy conduct means making amends with those who've offended us who have hurt us deeply and have caused us harm. It means being kind to our spouse or those in close proximity to us. It means loving the unlovely. It means loving those who annoy us. It means loving those who hate us. And I mean really loving them, not just saying it, but really experiencing that love in our hearts. It means going out of our way to bless people and thinking about ways to help others. It means giving to the poor and loving those who have hate and murder towards us in their own hearts. It means refraining from foul talk and turning the eye away from that which adulterates the heart. I could go on, but you get the drift, friends, don't you? Friends, if it all goes up and without warning, I want to be ready. Eyes on Jesus, transfixed upon his face. Hallelujah. Eternal Radio. Sounds to energise your faith. Music for your life with Eternal Radio. This is the End Time Hour with Jason Carter on Eternal Radio. Yesterday's prophecies, today's news. That was Highlands Worship, Holy, Holy holy. Friends, this dress rehearsal is very helpful indeed. It reminds us and helps us to keep in a state of daily readiness. Now, only for those of us though who have a discerning heart, and I guess by the fact that you're listening to this broadcast shows that you do. Praise God, friend. Praise God for those who are awake to the times in which we are living. So then, as we are awake, let's awaken others. Let's do all we can in these last days to spread the gospel message of Jesus Christ near and far. Let's help people to open their hearts and minds to the truth. Let's help them to escape the unreal world they are trapped in, that the mainstream media absorbed culture has created. As I said, it's a false reality. The only solid truth is the truth found in Jesus Christ. Christ our Lord. Now, Jesus said in Matthew 24, when he was giving the prophetic warnings of what would come, that this good news of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. So the gospel of Jesus must be heard in all nations, and then the end will come. Now, we are part of that plan to take the gospel now, at the end of Matthew 28, just as Jesus is about to ascend into heaven, he commands the disciples to go and make disciples. And likewise, he wants us to do the same until the gospel has been heard in all of the world. Now, that doesn't mean until everyone has accepted Christ. That's just not going to happen. But just that everyone has had the opportunity to do so. So let's think about ways that we can do that. It could be giving a simple tract to the cashier at the supermarket or washing the neighbor's car or going shopping for someone in need or doing someone's garden. Often acts of kindness can open the door to conversation about the Lord Jesus. You may be holding an alpha course or something similar in your home or having a Jesus movie night or even getting involved with the local homeless shelter. 
I'm just throwing some ideas out there, friends. But let's do all we can to spread this news of the gospel of Jesus Christ to everyone near and far. Hallelujah. End Time Hour is broadcast only on Eternal Radio, along with a host of other unique and excellent programmes. Now Eternal Radio is even easier to listen to. You can do this by simply visiting eternalradio.org.uk. That's eternalradio.org.uk and clicking on the Listen Now link. Alternatively, you can listen in on your phone by downloading the TuneIn app or Eternal Radio's very own dedicated apps for both Android and iPhone. It's also possible to tune in on a variety of other platforms including Amazon's Fire TV. Also, if you have any questions for me or for other Eternal Radio hosts, please email us at onairnow at eternalradio.org.uk That's onairnow at eternalradio.org.uk Yesterday's prophecies, today's news. This from the BBC, Gay Cake Appeal. Christian bakers' ashes lose appeal. The Christian owners of a Northern Ireland bakery have lost that appeal against a ruling that their refusal to make a gay cake was discriminatory. Appeal court judges said that under law, the bakers were not allowed to provide a service only to people who agreed with their religious beliefs. Two years ago, the family-run firm refused to make a cake iced with the slogan, Support Gay Marriage. The order was placed at the Belfast shop by gay rights activist Gareth Lee. Friends, this story serves to illustrate how antichrist our once Christian nations are becoming and how militant LGBTQ is targeting Christians for persecution. But this story should sound alarm bells in everyone, not just Christians, but people of other faiths and people of none. With this case, free speech has been dealt a massive blow. Free speech is a cornerstone of democracy. Without free speech, we have no democracy. This case also shows how authoritarian our governments are becoming. Importantly, the Ashes Bakery didn't refuse a customer on the grounds that they were homosexual. That would have obviously been wrong. They refused the customer on the grounds that the cake they were being asked to produce promoted a political message that they didn't agree with. Now, I can remember I wanted some banners printed for my church some time ago. I telephoned a printer, got a quote, produced the banners to the spec they required, and then sent them the artwork. Once they saw what the banners were promoting, they contacted me and said they wouldn't print them because they did not print religious material. It was a bit annoying, but I respected that standpoint. But now I guess this printer would be in danger of refusing work of this kind. Now, after this ruling, presumably a Muslim bakery or printer would be required by law to print cartoons of Muhammad. Now, I just can't see Muslims agreeing to that one, can you? And I recommend no one dares target an Islamic bakery like the Christian bakery was targeted. They might get more than they bargained for. Now, here's some more stories about the chip implant that is popping up in the news almost every day now. This from the Daily Nebraskan, local tattoo artist implants RFID chip in student's hand. Jonathan Carlson had an RFID chip implanted into his hand by a Lincoln tattoo artist. Carlson is a freshman computer and electrical engineer double major at the University of Nebraska Lincoln. He said he's not sure how he found out about RFID chip implants, but the idea came to him through the biohacking community. Carlson bought his chip online from Dangerous Things, a biohacking company that specializes in implantable devices. In an online video, founder Amal Grafstra discusses the chip implant in greater detail as well as some public concerns. Now, it was Amal Grafstra's mother who warned her son that he was playing with the mark of the beast. Obviously, he didn't listen. Okay, now this from the mail, the brain chip that could turn you into a superhuman. 80 million pound project will trial memory boosting implants. The chip mimics electrical signals that create long-term memories. Tests of the chip are initially being done on patients with epilepsy, but in the future, the chips could be commercially available, allowing anyone to boost their memory. The idea of implanting brain chips into people to give them superhuman memory might sound like the plot of the latest science fiction film, but one pioneering neuroscientist is ready to start trialling this futuristic technology in humans. The memory chips have already been successfully tested in rats 
could one day be a commercially available product to allow anyone to boost that memory. Friends, it's really incredible what the Apostle John saw in his visions is coming to pass before our very eyes. Both the hand and the forehead technologies he referred to as the mark of the beast are becoming available today. Conservative estimates say that there are about 50,000 people who already have an RFID chip implanted into their hand. But friends, there's a lot more than that. And plans are afoot to have an implant in the head, as we can see. And Google believes it can ultimately fulfill people's data needs by sending results directly to microchips implanted into users' brains. And do you remember Google Glass? Well, a developer produced a device with a chip that attached itself to the forehead, whereby a user could take a photo and upload it to Facebook using the power of thought. There was also plans to use this same technology to make purchases. Friends, I'm not making this stuff up. It's crazy to think though, isn't it, that the Apostle John possibly saw smart glasses and implantable chip technology over 2,000 years ago. Let's see what he said. Revelation 13, 16 to 17. And the second beast required all people, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand, possibly an RFID chip implant or skin tattoo, or on the forehead, possibly a brain implant, so that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark, the name of the beast or the number of its name. Now these technologies are often developed and promoted for health reasons, which shows them in a positive and meaningful light. It lowers our defences towards them. There's even a drive here in the UK to chip children in order to track them in the event they get abducted. Of course, eventually, convenience will drive shoppers down this route to start making payments quickly with a wave of the hand. But it's not only the implant, it's also the skin colour tattoo that does the same job. And this may eventually win over the majority as it seems less invasive than a piece of tech under the skin. Now importantly, this tech is not the mark of the beast until it becomes the only way to buy and sell. Also, it's worth noting that in Revelation 14, 11, it tells us that those who take the mark will not receive eternal life. Now, it's not the technology in itself that will damn a person to hell. It's the fact that in taking the mark, that person shows allegiance to the beast and worships it. The Antichrist system, the authoritarian global government that rejected the God of the Bible long ago. OK, now this from the UN News Centre. Sustainable food systems vital to achieving 2030 agenda nutrition targets. UN Rome-based agencies. 17th of October 2016, opening its 43rd plenary session in Rome today in the wake of major global agreements on sustainable development and climate change. The main United Nations body focused on food security and nutrition. Called for an urgent transformation of the world's food system and nutrition to eradicate all forms of extreme poverty, hunger and malnutrition by 2030. Now descriptions like one world government or global governance are being less used today because they now have negative connotations and that's thanks to the alternative media who have been working tirelessly to make their voice heard and help people to understand that this coming world order will not be a utopia but rather an authoritarian regime. Now, importantly, the new buzzword for one world government is Agenda 2030. So when you see that written down, or you see it online somewhere, Agenda 2030, that basically means one world government. Now, do you remember the UN's Agenda 21, which was all about climate change? Well, this is the sequel, Agenda 2030, and it's all about the UN transforming the economy, gender equality, agriculture, and education. Now, every nation signed up to the UN is adopting this agenda. It's a blueprint for world government. By the way, the Pope gave an opening speech for this agenda, endorsing it. This Pope is the most politically active Pope we have ever seen. And this, of course, is a foreshadowing of things to come too. Don't forget the Antichrist, the world leader, works hand in hand with the head of the world religious movement. Now, to implement this transformation, the UN needs to control all human activity on the planet. 
Now, the book of Daniel talks about a future kingdom that will devour the whole earth. And Revelation talks about, of course, the beast, the Antichrist and the false prophet who are given authority over every tribe, tongue and nation. Now, we'll just have to wait and see, friends, but could Agenda 2030 be the fulfilment of these prophecies? Eternal Radio. Sounds to energise your faith. When the stars burn down and the earth wears out and we stand before the throne. Music for your life with Eternal Radio. This is the End Time Hour with Jason Carter on Eternal Radio. Yesterday's prophecies, today's news. Friends, with all the darkness that is in this world, let's not lose sight of the light of Jesus Christ. It was prophesied of the Messiah that he would walk by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan in Galilee of the Gentiles among a people who dwelt in the land of the shadows of death. Upon those people, through the Messiah, it tells us, a great light would dawn. That prophecy in Isaiah 9 was fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ. Matthew 4, 14 says, The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers. Friends, isn't it amazing that the prophecies are so accurate right down to the very place, Galilee. Friends, the presence of darkness is not the absence of light. Let me say that again. The presence of darkness is not the absence of light. Now imagine if you've turned on a flashlight in a darkened room. It doesn't eradicate all the darkness, does it? But it beams a light wherever you point it. Now, that's what Jesus did. Jesus, being the light of the world, took light wherever he went. Now, we know that Jesus' presence on the earth didn't eradicate all darkness. We know this because the Jews remained under Roman occupation. We know this because eventually Jesus was arrested and cruelly treated and hung on a cross to die. Now, Jesus is the light, but you know, Jesus said that we are the light too. Jesus said in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So as followers, we carry Jesus' light. That's an amazing thought, isn't it? Because we have Christ in us, we carry his light wherever we go. Philippians 2.15 says that we have become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the middle of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. So friends, we shine the light of Jesus in a crooked and perverse generation. We shine the light of Jesus in the darkness of this world. Now it doesn't mean all the darkness goes away. But where we are, the darkness has to flee. Isn't that an amazing thought? So then, let's remember that today. No matter where we are, or even no matter what dark circumstances we are going through, the light of the Lord Jesus Christ will break out upon you and around you, dispelling all the darkness in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Friends, shall we pray together right now? Oh, hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we glorify your mighty and precious name today. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are the light of the world. And thank you, Lord, that you said whoever follows you will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. 
Oh Lord Jesus, I thank you for that wonderful truth today. And Father God, I pray for all the listeners out there today that maybe are struggling with the darkness that is in this world, or maybe they are struggling with the darkness that is in their own heart or around them in their own lives. Maybe they're struggling with personal circumstances. Father God, I want to pray right now for the listeners. I want to pray, Father, that you would dispel the darkness, that they would know your wonderful, wonderful light today. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, I command all darkness to flee over you now, friend, as you listen to this broadcast. May you be set free from the power of darkness and gloriously walk in the wonderful light of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I pray this in Jesus' mighty and glorious name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you, friends. God bless you. And have a great week. The views expressed in this production may not necessarily be those of Eternal Radio. Eternal Radio. The preceding program was made possible by kind donations from the listeners to Eternal Radio, for which we are very grateful. It takes a great deal of time and resources to prepare, produce, record and broadcast our programs to listeners in over 60 countries around the world. Our potential audience is much larger and Eternal Radio can now be heard all around the world. Online, on tablet, on smartphone and on TV. If you would like to help us continue broadcasting sounds to energize your faith, together with the message of God's love for all mankind around the world, please prayerfully consider making a donation. From your mobile phone, simply text ELCM02, followed by your donation preference of £3, £5 or £10 to 70070. Thank you for listening.